I'm Rosie Willett and I'm a PhD student at CPOM, which is Centre for Polar Observation and Modelling, which is part of NCEO at University College London. And what my group looks at is determining sea ice thickness from space. So sea ice is the bit of seawater that freezes solid when it gets cold, so in the polar regions. And the reason that we're so interested in its thickness is it's quite important for climate. It affects how the ocean circulates and it also acts like a lid between the ocean and atmosphere. So moisture and heat can't interact as well um, when the sea ice is present as well as if it wasn't present. Um, and the part that I look at is to do with measuring sea ice. So what we do is that we measure the height of the sea ice and the height of the adjacent water and we make a comparison between them to determine the thickness. But it's more complicated if there's a snow cover present on top of the sea ice. If we have that, then our instrument, which is a radar, may or may not be able to see through the snow cover, and that's what I'm looking at. How well can the radar see through the snow cover? So in lab tests, they've shown that if the snow cover is cold and dry, then the radar can see through it, but we're investigating whether that's the case in the field. I think sea ice is a really important climate investigator. If you think about it as like a giant ice cube floating in the ocean, it tells you about how the temperature of the ocean and the atmosphere around it are varying. If the temperature of the ocean or the atmosphere increases, then that sea ice will melt and vice versa. So it's sort of like a giant thermometer floating around in the ocean. So it can tell us a lot about how Earth's climate is changing. And what we find with Earth's climate is that it's amplified. Changes are amplified in the poles, which means that that's a really good place to look for changes in climate. And so sea ice is a really useful indicator in that way. What excites me most is getting a new data set. I love data and I love programming and I love making programs to try and extract information from data but without changing the nature of it. So I'm interested in how you can perform statistical analyses on things but really retaining the truth, you know, not doing so much processing that you lose track of what the data originally showed you. With our data analysis, what we're trying to do is understand um, how well we can penetrate through snow on top of sea ice. Um, so if we look at satellite data without that knowledge, it's really difficult to interpret. So what we did was a team of three people from UCL and three other scientists went to the Arctic and we did a series of measurements, all kinds of different things. One was a ground penetrating radar, which is like a small radar, which measures directly onto the sea ice and snow to look at what happens when you have different types of snow. How does that affect the radar signal? Um, we then dug up the snow and we measured the layers by hand. So we said, All right, you know, this is snow of a certain type. This is an icy layer within the snow. Documented all of that. We also did uh, measurements of snow depth in grids. And these grids were constructed around corner reflectors, which are sort of um, like three sides connected at 90 degrees of metal. And these are references for airborne radars. So we're working up from the small ground radar up to the airborne radar and then linking that with the satellite. So that's the kind of nested scales that we're, that we're working on. Um, we flew in a Twin Otter, which is a small aircraft with propellers, um, and we landed on the sea ice, which is terrifying and exciting. Um, it's, we, we flew and landed on unseen sea ice, which means that the pilot has to test the sea ice a few times, go over the same place, each time putting slightly more weight until they determine that it's actually strong enough to hold you. And at that point, then you land and you get out and you set up your experiment. Um, we also saw polar bear tracks quite near where we were working, which was exciting but quite frightening because, of course, that could be incredibly dangerous. Um, we saw Arctic wolves, which were sort of hanging around near where we were staying. Um, and we worked outside in minus 35 every day, covered in you know, every piece of kit imaginable. So it was an amazing experience. There are lots of things that I like doing in my spare time. Um, I really like fashion design. Um, I've done a couple of collections for UCL fashion shows, that's one thing I really like. Um, I also really like knitting and crocheting, which kind of goes hand in hand with sewing for the fashion design. Um, and at the moment I'm really into making cameras, so I'm into pinhole cameras um, and designing, like at the moment I'm looking at designing panoramic pinhole cameras. So it's quite geeky like my PhD, but it's something that I really enjoy.